After letting OpenAI and ChatGPT beat them to the punch, Google has now opened up early access to Bard, its generative AI chatbot, and we've had a bit of time to play around with it. The takeaway so far, Google isn't exactly tre treading new ground, but Bard at least is much more clear on what it can do, what it can't do, and where it falls short. So let's get into it. So why is this project called Bard? You're probably wondering. I know a lot of people have been asking this question. Realistically, it's supposed to be a storyteller and the supreme storyteller is William Shakespeare, AKA the Bard. I agree, it's a really tenuous link, but the underlying technology is utilizing Lambda or language model for dialogue applications. This has been in testing for months inside Google with a limited outside pool of outside testers. Lambda itself has apparently been in testing and in usage since 2017. So we definitely had high hopes for this. In essence, this goes far beyond what Google search will be able to with context specific responses and almost like a teacher approach to subjects if you wanna learn or even understand concepts and ideas or generally just get advice. That's the theory here anyway. Now, what can you do with Bard, at least compared to other AI chatbots out there? Well, just as we've explained, Bard is a generative AI product built on the Lambda model introduced back in 2021. Bard uses that underlying technology and tech to respond to prompts, generate text, answer questions, and then more on top of that. Google summarizes Bard as being powered by a large language model from Google that can generate text, write different kinds of creative content and answer your questions in an informative way. And that's a pretty good summary. If that doesn't mean much to you, what can you do with Bard? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is, especially following the debut of Bing's GPT powered chat experience, is to use Bard to find answers to questions or help you better understand a topic or topics. And in that instance, I have to say, in our testing, it works rather well. Asking Bard to explain an aspect of a smartphone, for instance, or summarize a recent news topic results in a very readable explanation that, at least in our limited usage thus far, feels less long-winded and much more concise and structured than what Bing and ChatGPT usually offer up and respond with. That's not to say the actual word count is always shorter, but Bard's replies are often phrased in a way that is genuinely easier to read and generally more concise. Google has made it clear that this isn't meant to replace traditional search, at least at this point, but it is impressive how Bard can quickly pull together a lot of information into a concise format. And it's probably for the best that Bard, at least that exists today, is not replacing search because in its current format, it rarely shows where it's getting information. And even when it does, it's really quite limited, at least at this point in time. A great way we found to use Bard is to do things like search for recipes and creating meal plans. Asking for a recipe with a handful of ingredients pulls together some ideas and using the drafts option, Bard generates a few options that you can choose from at once. You can even then go on and create a shopping list or even give context like a meal plan for weight loss or using specific ingredients and it does really well at picking them up. It's nothing groundbreaking of course, as ChatGPT can definitely do the same with its own varying results. It would be impressive if Bard had launched a month ago, but Bing's and Microsoft's already doing the same things here too. And that's all based on OpenAI's ChatGPT4 model, which is definitely more advanced than what Bard is currently able to offer right now. It still makes plenty of mistakes as well. The big thing that many were hoping to see Bard do or build upon that other AI tools haven't is to be more accurate. It's really easy to get other generative AI products to generate nonsense known as hallucinations, or simply get the a lot of the simple facts wrong. So far, Google Bard doesn't seem noticeably better on the accuracy front. In comparing some of the responses from Bard side by side with Bing, errors vary from prompt to prompt though. A key example is in creating a vegan meal plan. Bard suggests eggs as a snack, which is certainly not part of any vegan meal plan that I'm aware of. Errors also vary too, from incorrect figures to details like the Tensor G2 processor, which is using the Pixel 7 series, being based upon the 4 nanometer process, something which is simply not true, and Google should know this. There are also plenty of errors that just go against common sense, such as Bard also implying that the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro haven't even been released yet, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. These mistakes are common for generative AI and show how Bard is still not quite up to par with typical search results and even some of the competition. A frustration we alluded to earlier though was a worrying lack of sources for the information that is regurgitated by Bard. While Bing shows links to where it pulls information throughout, 
Bard only occasionally shows a line or limited line to where the information has come from. Infuriatingly, you can't even manually ask Bard to show more information on that. So it's something we hope Google can fix over this preview period. There is one thing though about Bard that really stood out against other AI tools similar to it. Google isn't treating this like a finished product at this stage and it's doing its due diligence to be responsible, or at least it appears to be about what the AI is spitting out. Throughout your usage of this system, Google will remind you again and again that Bard is an AI and its information won't always be correct. There's a constant banner under the chat box that directly says Bard may display inaccurate or offensive information that doesn't represent Google's views, which is more than a few of the other chatbots out there. Bard also holds back on lots of sensitive topics that you might try and ask it. So for instance, if you might ask about medications or something like weight loss, Bard might just avoid the topic altogether. You also can't get Bard to explain its sources or talk beyond a snippet about specific people. Asking Bard to offer up details on a person doesn't seem to work as intended and it doesn't work every time unless that person is particularly famous. Although you can still trick the system by using a social handle or username, sometimes with some quite crazy results. There are also more subtle ways Google is implying that Bard isn't finished. There's no prominent logo or branding outside of that diamond icon seen alongside the replies that you'll you receive. There's not even an icon that you can create a shortcut to for the product on your smartphone's home screen. It's just a simple web link. Bard is actually currently siloed off from the rest of the company's offerings. There's no Bard in Google search or workspace applications or anything else for that matter. That's coming in the future, but this early preview is just an, what it is, an early chance to try out the tech that powers Bard rather than using it alongside the rest of Google's suite. There are two ways to look at this after our preview period. One being that Google is potentially trying to be more responsible with Bard, at least compared to some of the others out there. That's certainly part of the equation, or at least from the outside, it seems like that. But reading between the lines, it also seems like Google is trying to excuse that it's a bit behind the curve, and it is, when you try this out for yourself. It's good in its own right, but it's not better than what Microsoft and OpenAI are putting in front of customers right now. It's rough around the edges, and Google was definitely right to temper expectations, but it's maybe disappointed us a little bit in some ways. Now the question is, is just whether Bard's future can actually prove to be better and if all of this data from search or this search giant can be fused into a useful everyday product that eventually replaces your regular search procedures. At least at this stage, it seems a bit tenuous. I want to ask you though, have you managed to get on this preview and try Bard out for yourself? What have you been asking or learning? I actually like the idea of getting some basic coding projects prepared or even checked if I'm trying to learn some coding myself. And I'm hoping to see more of uh, Bard's explanations or reasonings for their choices of why they've decided to do things a certain way. But it's still definitely a way off the competition, but it's for me, it's merely a fun time waster, at least at this stage. I know that it is a preview. Hopefully we'll see something a little bit more concrete later down the line. Let me know what you've been doing with this latest chat GPT competitor in the comments sections below. Until next time, though, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.